in that round two match against the French and we're expecting perhaps a few more tonight they're still coming in as indeed are the two teams England you can see they're being led out not by their captain but by Rochelle Clark 134 caps for England and if she gets on tonight which I rather suspect she will she will become the most capped ever from one cap more than the great Wales and British and Irish lion Gethin Jenkins so there is Rochelle Rocky Clark as she's known to her mates now 36 still part of this England squad Ladies and And now, ladies and gentlemen, boys and girls, please remain upstanding for Flower of Scotland. Let's take a look at the team, shall we? Scotland coach Shade Munro has maintained faith in the side beaten by France. Two alterations. One sees the return of the former Great Britain international rower Sarah Bonner in the back row. She had been due to start a fortnight ago, but was a late withdrawal. Jade Conkle, one of the few full-time professionals in the Scotland team, retains her place at number eight. Almost half this team play league rugby in either England or France, and that is a factor in Scotland's improvement. Simon Middleton has mixed his England team up a bit. Five players who are among the replacements against Wales start here. Lauren Cattell and Laji Kuima join forces in the midfield. Izzy Noel-Smith and Roe Burnfield come into the back row. The front five is world-class. Sarah Byrne at tight head seems to improve with every match and there's a rejig among the back three Daniel Waterman switches to wing with Ellie Kill Dunn at fullback on to the replacements the Scotland back row forward Louise McMillan is the younger sister of Siobhan who starts at loose head for England Rochelle Clark and Marley Packer have 190 test caps between them our referee this evening there she is from Limerick she, for how long? a former winner of this Grand Slam title in the Women's Six Nations, 70 caps, the island long? captain, now really something of a trailblazer as a referee. 
She's already taken okay. charge of a Pro 14 match and also a game in the European Challenge Cup. So England get us underway, playing from left to right. And the ball there in the hands of Ellie Kildun, who showed against uh, Wales in the second round match just how dangerous she is in open play. Passed on there from Leanne Riley. And the Scots getting in there, but the Our referee side. awarding the penalty. Number well, 15. alongside me tonight, former England captain Catherine Spencer. Well, I suppose we Our saw Catherine at last 15. year's World Cup, just how much and how swiftly the women's game is progressing. I suppose coaches like Simon Middleton recognise that standing still effectively means going backwards. Yes, exactly, Perfect. Martin, looking to progress yeah, all the is. time. And, and Simon Middleton is looking yep. to that team with players as well. We see some young, exciting players in an England shirt tonight. A much-changed team, isn't it? Shade Munro has gone for consistency. Simon Middleton has a vastly different team out on the pitch this evening. So, first throw there for Amy Cocaine and rising high Abby Scott, who was utterly dominant in the line-out against Wales. She really is one of the most impressive players in this England side. Referee playing an yep. advantage here to England. The ball being driven on there by Izzy Noel-Smith. There's Daly McLean with the cross kick. That's intended for Waterman, who takes it wonderfully well despite pressure. Okay. Ball taken up there by Amy Cocaine. Over. We're looking at this front five for England. It is truly world class. There have been alterations Release. to this England side over the course of recent months. One or two reasons for that. Not least the parallel sevens programme that's operating at the moment. That was Vicky Cornborough. There's the scrum half, Leanne Riley. Riley was among the uh, try scorers against Wales at the Twickenham Stoop. Here is Riley again. On to Daly McLean. That time it was on from Cattell, she burst through, on her shoulder there is Waterman. And that was a super step, we've been playing less than two and a half minutes, and England already have their first try. That was a perfect start, wasn't it, really, for England? Built the phases through that front five that we're talking about. Distribution from Kate McLean, lovely wide distribution, and Lauren Cattell just sees that gap, by doing so takes three defenders, and. Nolly Waterman comes in on the end with her trademark footwork of hers. Just that Scottish defence, the line just broken up slightly and Cattell had the reaction to see that and nip through and, uh, and Danielle Waterman on for another, another England try. There you see, 45th international score. I think it's appropriate at this juncture that we uh, do mention the second alteration that Scotland were forced into making just before kick-off. They lost their captain, Lisa Martin, who is indeed a club teammate of that lady there, who should have been her opposite number, Katie Daly-McLean. They both play for the Darlington Moden Club. But uh, Martin forced to pull out at short notice, and it is a bit of a miscommunication there in the midfield. It may have played some sort of role. Absolutely. I mean, Lisa Martin is Scotland's most experienced player, their captain. It's a, it's a big blow just before kick-off, but Scotland players can't think about that now. You know, they're the players on the pitch. They're the ones that have got to play this game, they have to put that out of their minds. The restart there from Lisa Thompson. Well, that falls into the category of unforced error. Scrum or retake? Immediately, Scrum. Scotland find themselves on the back foot again. It's crucial that they get a toehold here. They started so well a fortnight ago against France. It hasn't happened as yet tonight. They did. They had a, had a good second-half performance against Wales, and they did start really strongly against France. And, and they would have looked at this England team and seen the change and think, right, give them a bit of confidence, we can get into this game. And uh, try already scored against them, an error with the kick-off, and, and England have a lovely platform there as we shave Munro looking on. England have a lovely platform of this scrum. Yeah, Shade Munro, Set who a few seasons ago was involved with the Glasgow Warriors Club in the days of Sean Lanine. For your feet underneath your body. So another penalty being conceded by the Scots here. 
It is a peculiar irony, but the uh, the way that the Rugby Football Union who run things, obviously for English rugby, making one or two alterations in the way they contract players now, focusing their contracts on the sevens side rather than the 15s they're almost more full-time scottish professionals tonight than there are english ones yeah exactly a lot of talk isn't there about the way england focuses with the sevens and then with the 15s and, and meanwhile quietly scotland Focus. developing their players for full-time professional players Scott, albeit three of them playing in lille uh, with that agreement that they've got over there yes lille metropole one of the strong france clubs but it does mean that they can develop playing over there and uh, in all likelihood, the women's Six Nations, or well, the outcome of the title, will hang on that match between England and France, which happens down in Grenoble. Can't wait. Best place to play rugby in France, Martin. Yes, Grenoble, the old Winter Olympic city from 50 years ago. Terrific stadium there. This is rather better from the Scots, being driven on there by Megan Kennedy. The tie head drop. It's there now for Sarah Law. The drive from the captain, Rachel Malcolm. She assumed the leadership role. Oh dear. And the pass, well, it was fired a little captain. unsympathetically there to Javor McMillan. You could see the intent, couldn't you? Strong. But it was a great, great driving more from the line That's something that actually England have become, sort of become one of their trademarks, that, that driving more and... Um, Scotland won a piece of that action as well. I know it may not be playing to your strengths, going back to your own playing career, but we're playing on the synthetic surface tonight. It's going to quicken things up a bit, isn't it? Yeah, that's awful, isn't it? <laughs> uh, yeah, no, where's the mud and where's the rain? But yeah, it's great, isn't it? What a great, actually, stadium to play this game in. Lovely that they're developing this as the home of Scottish women rugby, and, and hopefully we'll see some great wide women rugby today. Yes, I didn't mean necessary to... Uh, deliver a slight on your career but uh, certainly for a lot of these players including this one here Ellie Kildun she will thrive she is uh, a top of the ground horse England rampaging again look at that offload that time coming from Poppy Cleal who's moved Back to number push. eight tonight Sarah Hunter one of those players who's unavailable on there to Abby Scott that's a second row partner Tamara Taylor whose career really does uh, run in parallel to the rise of English rugby. The speed of hands here, and there's a young lady who pops up in the midfield. She might as well be a centre. Her skills are so broad. Sarah Byrne, her second try in this Six Nations campaign. Lovely try again from England, and they just have strengths all over the park. Lovely pass out again from... Dana McLean and Kill Dunn makes another lovely break. She made a lovely break in the last game against Wales. A little bit Emily Scarra esque. And again, we see this Here wide again. pass, forward runners through. Thank and you. Sarah Byrne, in her familiar position out on the wide areas or the pitches, takes another really well deserved try. Well, I know she's found a position now there in the front row, but you can see some of the skills that she used to show there in the back row at one point in her career, but I reckon she could be just as at home in the midfield with 13 on her back, just as much as three. She's, she's brilliant, and she, you know, she's shot to stardom, if you like, in, in the World Cup last year, and has carried on that form into the Six Nations. She's just so lovely to watch. And she's just 20 as well, isn't she? So here is uh, Katie Daly-McLean, who led England to that world title four years ago. Well, you can win bets <laughs> for scoring conversions like that. That's a bit of a cross crossbar challenge, wasn't it? Not the perfect strike, but this, well, followed the script perfectly, didn't it? And you see this all the time, these England forwards out mixing with the backs, running at spaces, always find it, always making ground. Well taken there by Laji Tuima. Tuima, who was born in Fiji. Ball was out. She's actually a niece of Akapusi Oh, and Scotland 
creating a few problems for England. They can't afford to get complacent. Knock on. In the was a knock on there. But it is crucial, certainly in the minds of those Scotland players, that they get the next score here. Really good pressure from much better. Hannah Smith. See her pushing up, pushing up in line and getting away of that offload. That's what England are so good at, this offloading game, keeping the ball moving so quickly and the pressure from the Scotland defence. Hannah Smith there, who's playing 12. Really, really good pressure and stopping that stopping that continuity from England. Yes, Hannah Smith, who's appeared in the back row in this tournament already, wasn't due to start tonight. She was promoted following the withdrawal of the captain, Lisa Martin. Good carry there from Poppy Cleal. best described tonight as a brisk evening it's only a brisk old breeze that's blowing out there you can see how England are playing pretty much into the teeth of that in this first half that will certainly shape the way they play the game they will look to keep the ball in hand as much as possible on the other hand Scotland will look to play territorially you see where the touch judges take a step please Take a step off the mark. Uh, referee Thanks, just Taylor. talking to Sarah Byrne, just pushing her, just pushing her feet back. Okay. Yes, he really is something of a rising star is Joy Neville, having taken charge of that Pro 14 match between Ulster and Sun and Kings recently. And after all that, the ball went astray, but now it's gone back the way of Scotland. Portland, they keep the ball in hand. That was well snapped up by Sarah Bonner. On the taking play up towards halfway. And let's see if Scotland can create something this time. That was the carry from the captain, Rachel Malcolm. Just breaking through there is Helen Nelson. Nelson playing at fly half, as she did in the opening game in Colwyn Bay against the Welsh. There's Sarah Law, who started that match against Wales on the bench. Chipped ahead by Chloe Rolly. And England will be wary of Chloe Rolly. Look at the stepping coming there from Ellie Kildun. She certainly carries the stamp of a future star in this game, does Ellie Kildun. She's just 18, but it's been turned over by the Scots. They certainly have been stung into action after those opening two scores. This is rather better from Scotland. Advantage. Sarah Law just looking advantage to get her Norris. hands on the ball. The referee playing a penalty advantage here to the Scots. Oh, and a bit of space possibly out wide, but the ball no slipping advantage. through there, the fingers of Rona Lloyd. But we will come back all the way to the other side of the pitch for the penalty. Six. Yes, good, Number six good position white. for Release. for Scotland. Rowena Burnfield just being penalised for not releasing in the tackle and prior to that it was a fantastic turnover from Scotland to Paul's Warren gone. McMillan I think which gave them back possession yeah. and now here they are with a scoring opportunity and going for posts. Well, it's quite a hefty distance although we must remind ourselves that the wind is helping. So well, look at this move here from Ellie Kildun, yeah. just 18. Yeah. Lana Scald and take it back to Scotland. Hooker, textbook turnover there. Smith making yards again, and they just didn't quite get that last pass, did they? Well, I should think that Shade Munro will be reasonably enthused by what he's seen over the course of the last five minutes. So, Sarah Law. That's the first shot at goal. She's got the distance and she has the line. Scotland are on the board. 14 points to three. That's important, isn't it? Get some points on the board, get a bit of confidence after that initial really quick try from England. 
the Scotland team are a nuggety old bunch. Saw that against the Welsh where they were trailing at half time. They came back from 13 nil down and 18 5 down just to, well, almost snatch it. In the end, they missed out by a single point. There's the carry from the captain, Rachel Malcolm, who plays her league rugby in England for Loughborough Lightning. Heading across field, here goes uh, Chloe Rolly into some space there. Hanging back was Daly McLean. Good step from the former England captain. Big fan there from Izzy Noel Smith. In the position is the scrum half, Riley. Here's the danger woman, Kildun. Back. Three tries in her first Six Nations for Ellie Kildun. Off your feet, Blue! Riley, the Harlequin. That Scotland defence up quickly, but slight suggestion of a dog leg there, so there was an opportunity to Back. exploit it for England, but the hands a little bit uh, clumsy. As was that kick ahead, straight into touch. Sure. And again, that was good pressure from Scotland and Leanne Riley a bit annoyed with her kick then went straight out but England want to play this quick game want to play this wide game but that pressure from the Scotland players there really good and that's what they need to do Martin for the full game they need to put so much pressure on England they can't give them any space can't give them any time we've already seen twice what they'll do with that here's the Watsonian Lana Skeldon You can see the uh, big hand going in from Roe Vernfield. England have it. Scotland will have to tighten up that set piece. Back. Well, a chance, and it's hacked ahead. And here goes Lisa Thompson. Well, look at the fullback getting yeah. back so quickly, killed down, but Scotland still have it. Taken forward by Nelson, driving up and over the line. Now, can they get it down? And Joy Neville says they have. Fantastic, just what this game needed. Just what Scotland needed, and Jade Conkle is the player that goes over and scores that try. Fantastic pressure from Lisa Thompson and build up to that. She's become such an influential player for Scotland now. Gaining so much experience. And here we see just the timing. Thompson kicks ahead and we thought Ellie Kildun had done a fantastic job and just couldn't keep control of that ball. And look how many Scottish players are there ready. And it's Jade Conkle that just uses her power and drives over that try line. England couldn't do anything about that. Really good. Well, Conkle's second try of the championship. Well, that was a nice strike from Sarah Law. But the breeze just taking it wide of that right hand upright. Well, what a reply England we've seen from Scotland. Just a few errors, hasn't there? Creeping in from the England team, just not quite getting their timing right in the backs. Couple of loose balls. Scotland pounced on that. Jay Conkle in her sixth Six Nations campaign. No, no, wide, leave it. Well, you can see the Scots have been buoyed by the last 10 minutes or so. And Sarah Law. Good carry from Megan Kennedy. Back foot. Kennedy, one of the East certainly in international terms, very inexperienced Music. players in this Scotland team. Kennedy made her debut for Scotland in that opening game against Wales. That's a loose pass. Dealt with very deftly though. Here goes Waterman three steps 
crucial that the Scots make their first up tackles. It's Thompson who eventually apprehends her. Terrific offload. Following up with Al there was Daly McLean. It's kill done. Tackle roll 11. Well, the Scottish defence looked very disjointed for a while there. They've had chance to regroup now. Oh, and look at them lining up there in the white jerseys. Well, the offload there from Abby Scott didn't find the player it was meant to, but it's back in the hands of England again. They're just six metres out. It's three against two. Oh, go on. And going Magic over in the corner goes Charlotte Pierce. Well, you have to say that Good. Scotland rather gifted that one. Did you blood on your cheek? They did, didn't they? But England still made hard work of it, didn't they? A few errors, but yeah, Scotland are we disappointed, didn't they? They got that penalty, they got that try. And then back where we are. Scored by number 11, Charlotte Pierce. Abby's offload, initially not going to the right person, but pounced on by that player, Sarah Byrne. Yeah, I spoke with your captain about it. Oh, okay, yeah, keep an eye for it, okay? Okay, no Well, Lisa Thompson just springing out of the line there. Looking for the interception, but it proved ineffective. Well, look at that. Well, that's that's the power fade, isn't it? Tiger Wood style coming from Casey Daly McLean. Fantastic and kick, wasn't it? Right from the touchline. Makes the score Scotland a woman eight. England 21. Hint of a hint of a forward pass from Tuima, but it doesn't matter now. Try's been given. And look at this kick from the swerve of the ball. Fantastic conversion. Judging the win superbly. The former England captain. 21 points to eight. Scotland will have to take a look at their defensive structures. There's Daly McLean again kicking into space. No. Raleigh just almost bumping into a teammate there, Rona Lloyd. Powerful ruck. You don't touch that ball. But Scotland have emerged with it, but they've done so hands. illegally. There were hands on the ground. Relax. Fantastic power, counter racket we call it, from England. Hands. Scotland forced to use inventive ways to get that ball back and uh, Joy Neville spotted it. Penalty again to England and back Scotland go again. Okay. Time off, Just for break. those people who are Time tuning in to English women's rugby for the Happen. first time, perhaps since the World Cup, it may be worth that explaining why we've had one or two alterations there's no Sarah Hunter tonight she's injured picked up a knock playing for Loughborough Lightning last week she scored a hat-trick of tries against Italy in the opening game no Rachel Burford who was hobbling for quite a bit in the game down at Twickenham Stoop but we have had that shift in uh, in priorities almost as we start to look towards sevens in the Olympic Games which means there are a few players on full-time contracts some familiar names as well doing that now yeah that's right likes of Emily Scarrett Natasha Hunt and Jessica Breach, who, who came to the fore in the Autumn Internationals against Canada with all those tries that she scored out in the out in the sevens game, along with you know several other players. And um, and you know it's a debate that rumbles on the sevens versus fifteens debate. And um, you know I love fifteen aside rugby. I love the Six Nations, and um, it's it's a, it's a tough one, isn't it? But at the same time, it gives Simon Middleton. Well, force him the opportunity really to develop these other players and these and these younger players and um, and England have such strength and depth as we see Simon talking to Scott there he'll be relatively happy won't he but there's been a few mistakes creeping from England so let's see how Amy Cocaine goes here oh that was uh, copybook stuff rising high in the centre of the line at Abby Scott Utterly dominant. Scott, who was actually born in Dumfries. Good carry there from uh, Tuimar. Daly McLean. 
There's Vicky Cornborough. Oh, the offload was good, but Abby Scott couldn't keep hold of it. The intent is always there. Always trying to keep this ball moving, but it gives Scotland a bit of a get out clause. But Abby Scott has really developed her game. So impressed with her running the line outs now. And as you say, just textbook delivery from the top of that line out beforehand. Eve, get in early. Thank you. Crouch. Now go. Queen's one of the most prominent clubs in that Tyrrell's Premier 15s league, which Both is doing so much for the okay. women's game. Not just space. in England, because there are players Please. from outside England who are playing in that league. Harlequins is Abby Scott's club. Saracen's currently top. Crouch. That's right, and Deb McCormack playing in the second row for Scotland also plays for Harlequins. She actually hails from the, the same first club that Rachel Burford did down in Medway in, in my home county of Kent. And here she is playing for Scotland. Look at the power there from that England pack. If we look at the front five, it is pretty much the World Cup final front five. Kicking through. Right, so Kicking Tamara through. Taylor as well, a world champion from Number 2014. Eight. Scotland have Jay Conquarter. Thank for that. Scrum moving backwards, fairly rapid rate. She managed to pick and make round and then poppy clear or penalise, trying to kick the ball through. Good kick using the win. There's Jade Concourt. See, that's what you want, a number I'm eight injury. that can make I'm ground, off. even off a scrum going backwards. Jade did really well, lots of long arms. You see Poppy Cleo just coming in and try to kick okay. the ball uh, out, of the, out of the tackle area, which is, which is not legal, and, and Joy Neville on the spot to penalise. be careful of blocking the pair okay worth okay. bearing in mind as we go through this match that this fixture 12 months ago scotland were beaten by 64 points to nil now we have only been playing Take 25 minutes but a feature of scotland in this six nations so far is or has been improved performances against both wales and france Taken on there by Sarah Law, although she's apprehended and driven back by Abby Scott. Straight off your feet. Now they were guilty of going off their feet. I think it was Sarah Byrne Six. that time. It was a little bit too eager, Three. and they don't want this penalty count to start racking up. First half against Italy two rounds ago. They gave away so many penalties. So six penalties at the moment, evenly split. Three committed by England, three by the Scots. So Scotland looking to take advantage of the wind which is at their backs through the first 40 minutes. Two nine, one get back. One Lana back. Skeldon, the hooker, earning her 24th cap tonight. Well, it hasn't gone entirely the hand, voice. but I think the Scots have it. I think the player's going to have to get herself out of there. Stay. Back push, white. And Sarah Law feeding the ball out. Another carry from Concord. Law feeds it out again. Sarah Bonner drives on. Very powerful Sarah Bonner, former international rower. That's Megan Kennedy. This is very effective from the ladies in blue. Who is it this time? That tackle looked a little bit high, although the referee's happy with it. There goes Siobhan McMillan. England making their tackles at the moment. Another drive from Conkle. Once again, she makes metres. They've got to choose their moment here of the Scots. It's going to be another drive. Bonner again, they're within two metres now of the Scots. Another little dart round the fringes. 
An advantage back here for a high tackle. Well, we are coming back for that high tackle. Number nine. I think Joy Neville actually uh, was spoken to in her ear by one of her assistants. Jake Conker wants to take it quickly. Yep. Well. I wonder if somebody saw that. It's Bonner. This Scotland back row, very effective with ball in hand. Now lining up is Lana Skeldon. Here goes Skeldon. She offers it on to Thompson. Big tackle there from England. But they're having to weather something of a storm here. That was Rachel Malcolm, the captain. Law. Plucking that out of the air was Hannah Smith. Here's Bonner. Those white jerseys will have to try and roll away from there. Well, I do wonder if we might see a yellow card shortly, or at least a warning. Seven, please. Let's see what Joy and I will talk and say. Is he? And it is a yellow card. Captain, we need to care from this area. So Two off goes Izzy Noel Smith. There, that was cynical. Yeah, please do. Well, it now gives them the period through to half time with a one player advantage. Conkle, perhaps predictably, but can England stop her? They can do this time. England trying to hold her up. And they have affected the turnover. And you wonder if that was the right decision, don't you? I mean, the England scrum has been powerful, but now they had the player advantage. Could they have, with a forward going off, could they have? Could they have gone for a scrum there? Okay. Or just got some more points on, actually, come back from territory with three points. Right, you're captain. What do you do here? Put another player into that England scrum? They're so powerful, aren't they, though? So powerful. Space. Crouch. They will be confident that they can do it. Find without the additional body that's Set. exactly what they're doing so it's Leanne Riley there waiting for the put in stability please both sides so virtually nine minutes on the sim bin nine minutes left in the half find Ian Riley with the put in again. Well, the front rows have crashed down. The pick up from Poppy Cleal. There's Riley. And England playing with great patience here and precision. Abby Scott that time, back from Riley. There goes Sarah Byrne. Six. Bailey McLean pumps it forward. Well, the left wing there. Rona Lloyd rather misjudged that. Blue. The kick ahead from Chloe Rolly. And the call for the mark. Katie Delia McLean showing all her experience. I think Chloe Rolly is down here. Scotland can ill afford to lose her. Person I was going to be just about to be harsh about her kick, but I won't do now. <laughs> it's just the wrong decision here, really, wasn't it? Or, or wrong execution. Just like Doctor looking at her ribs, potentially. Well, it's hard to imagine quite uh, what caused that. It may well have been an accidental collision after she kicked the ball. And I think she felt the left shoulder there of Vicky Cornborough. Yeah, I mean, Cornborough didn't, didn't necessarily change her line, did she? But... Um you're she sounding like an old pro, <laughs> Catherine. You're sounding like an old pro. You 
can't have these fullbacks getting all their own way all the time, Martin. I was going to say, is that what you <laughs> forwards do, is it? No comment. And Rolly's been a star, actually, for Scotland, hasn't she? Uh, getting off that subject, and she's been a really fantastic player and uh, and one of those names on a team sheet that an opposition would be wary of. It's two glorious tries against Wales in the comeback in that uh, second half at Colwyn Bay. <laughs> two full-backs here, Ellie Kildun for England and Chloe Rolly for Scotland. Rolly who plays her club rugby for the Lille club in northeast France. Certainly two of the best players on show tonight. A rather conservative clearance, although uh, bear in mind, it is very blustery out there. Casey Daly mclean earning her 97th cap tonight. Take a step, back. Take a step please, back. Thank you. So Lana Skeldon, mindful to hit her player this time. It's a shortened line. That was much better. On from Law. Scotland at the moment just drifting across field. Very easy to cover for the England defence. That's the halfway line. Well, that was a powerful carry from Emma Wassell. Oh, oh some good offloading. And stepping away through there was Rona Lloyd. Tackle away. Last six minutes of the half, last six minutes of the Simbin period. Law works the short side, that was on to Nelson. There's the carry from Skeldon. Powerful counter-rucking again from England, Turnover. and they've stolen it. Not for the first time tonight. Riley. That was Burnfield. Bailey McLean. Opting to keep the ball herself. Now the rocking's coming from the women in blue, Just but it's on. gone forward. Just enough, on. That's unfortunate for Can't Scotland there. They got their enough, bodies on. there, didn't they? Just knocked it on, which has gifted England the scrum back. And it's nice to see some, some counter-rucking, actually. Or so often we see teams not put bodies into the breakdown and to fan out across the pitch and just shows what we can do and we can attack those breakdown areas. Great work from Cornborough there initially and then the bodies fly in and Poppy Cleo just takes control of the ball at the base of that. And those are good old-fashioned traditional rugby skills. Bear in mind that England pack. One player down. That was the pickup from Poppy Cleal, the Saracen. And that was Abby Scott. The carry there from Cattell. That was well picked up by Waterman. Okay. Uh, Scotland playing with pace. I know that they have to if they're to take full advantage of this Simbin period. It's been managed pretty well so far by England. Away, 14! Don't move, 14, just stay there. Perfect. Daniel Waterman. Use it! Being urged to get out of the way. That's another super carry from Bonner. Here goes Law. Trying to work the short side over there, brought in by Release. Lisa Thompson. I got ten, I got Last three minutes of the Simbi. Well, the ball secured by Hannah Smith. <laughs> On your the feet. England players Thank going God. off their feet. Number 10. Yeah, I think it was 
as Joy Neville says, it was Katie Daly McLean that was penalised. Going through that ruck, putting pressure on this is Enel Smith. Time Looking off, very calm, but inside I know she'll be wanting to get back on that pitch and she'll be really okay. disappointed with her sim bin. And be careful for the offside centre midfield. Okay, cool. so you okay. see there, she doesn't the make no attempt really to move away from that breakdown area. Yes, I think Izzy Noel Smith is rather working on the basis that she won't be required before half time, despite what the clock says there. In theory, she could have to come out here for a final phase. It's normally the period when you don't expect her to uh, start doing something to get those muscles warmed up again. It's a pretty chilly night in Glasgow. Yeah, exactly, but she looks pretty calm and chilled at the moment. We can see in front of us, just sitting, watching. Well, two players get some treatment there. Sarah Law, the Scotland's scrum half, and also Sarah Bonner. Thompson fires it into the 22. Lisa Thompson, one of those players. Yeah, one, I need you to work hard. Take a step. Yep. And make who sure spends most of her life step. these days in northeast France, Lisa playing for Lille Metropole. Time off. Time off, please. I've spoken to you pretty much. I'm asking you to get the tail to take a step. If nothing improves, yep. I'll go to a free kick. You need to ask them to listen to you. You need to take a step, okay? Time on. I take a step. step. Force hall from Joy Neville. So here's Lana Skeldon. Well, it's been stolen by England. And is that perhaps the last chance for the Scots in this first half? They were to get back into this match. You'd have thought they had to get some sort of score. No, while England were down to 14. Here's Leanne Riley. Waterman. Can England create something here from inside their own 22 with one player down? Riley feeds the ball on. The white jersey spread across the field. Cutting infield there was Abby Scott. There's Riley. Daly McLean into the hands there of Tuima. Now it's with Charlotte Pierce. This is outstanding stuff from England. Important tackle coming in from Rona Lloyd. That was timely. Danger not gone though. And here is Kill Dunn, who simply opens up her stride. And that is England at their brilliant best. It brings up the try bonus point. And they did that with 14 players on the pitch. My, oh, my. Quite sensational. And that all started, really, from a, a Scotland line-out. They didn't manage to win their own line-out. And look at this pass from Gaty Daly mclean Everyone expecting her to kick and just the speed of that pass out to Danielle Waterman. Perfect, thank you. Ball is cleared quickly. It's that quick ball that's so difficult to seconds. deal with. Another wide pass. And yeah, you can take it. Fantastic break from Pierce. An all too familiar long stride of Ellie Kildun. England will be pleased with their bonus point. Well, you do have to remind yourself that Ellie Kildun is just 18. There's always a danger of building up players a little bit too early in their careers, but could we be seeing here the early stages of the creation of a rugby superstar? She is very, very special indeed. That is half-time. England imperious. And that woman in a class of her own. And that's the half-time score at Scotstone. Half-time at Scotstone, England lead by 26 England points 26. to
carry. There's Thompson. Cutting in field. That was Rachel Malcolm. The captain tonight. Wasn't expecting to be when she woke up this morning, but Lisa Martin, the fly half and captain, forced out, the uh, Scotland captain, I should say, just forced out just before uh, kickoff. There's Law. That's Sarah Bonner being driven back by Sarah Byrne. Roll White! Byrne, who's been at her powerful best tonight. One of the try scorers. Here's Conkel. Law. The carry there from Emma Wassell. No, Weiss. On a death chip into space. That for Musgrove to chase. Unlucky. There was some space out there. They weren't making too much ground before that were there. They were building their phases, weren't making a lot just of ground. Seven, just on. needed to That's hold it. up a bit higher, didn't it? Just needed a bit more time on that kick. Well, it was a well-placed kick there from Helen Nelson. Can take a step, please? There is Nelson, the fly half. Scotland have turned it over. There's Conkle, just fending off Amy Cocaine. Law. That was Smith. Good tackle covering across there from Daly McLean. That's Russell. Oh, and then if there wasn't a knock on the first time, there certainly was the second. Yeah, it's a shame that, isn't it? They were making some good ground there. Wassel, a good strong run through the middle. Well, they are creating a little bit of uh, penetration here, the Scots, aren't they? And that's bound to concern Simon Middleton. And it's not just Jake Conkle. Just sometimes England just have a sense of just trying to sometimes just overcomplicate things or just take that risk a bit too high. Just making Kennedy getting a little bit of treatment, not looking entirely happy at the moment. But England just need to tidy things up a little bit. Just sometimes just forcing a bit too hard. And that was just looking back at the tries. Nolly got on the board to start with Sarah Byrne crashing through. This was the uh, Scotland effort. Jake Conkle forcing her way over, despite the best efforts of Sarah Byrne. Charlotte Pierce getting in on the act after Lisa Thompson had sprung out of the defensive line. So Megan Kennedy back up, earning her third cap tonight. There's Ellie Kildun. Plays a club rugby for Gloucester Hartbury, but uh, really a product made in Yorkshire. The first involvement in rugby was actually in uh, in the other code, rugby league. Coach, Certainly has been a useful Five. acquisition to the 15 woman game. Support your own body weight, don't just put too much pressure on them, and let's make sure we don't step back. Okay, thank you. It's always an interesting listen if you get the opportunity. Listen to the referees, whether you are watching the game with us or if you get the opportunity to go to a match and have one of those uh, ref link kits that you can pop in your ears. There goes Waterman off. Her wing, and that was uh, a rather handy handoff. Chipped ahead by Daly McLean. And you can see there how England are taking full advantage of the following win, which they didn't have, obviously, in the first half. 
play territory when you're in your own half and then uh, start playing rugby once you're in that bottom third. But this was a glorious break, and I tell you what, Ellen Nelson felt that right in the mush. Lesson of the story, don't try and tackle Nolly Waterman high. But that was good, that was a set move, wasn't it, from the base of the scrum. Linking up with Poppy Cleo, who passed the ball out at eight. So Lana Skeldon, can she find her teammate? Well, she can, but she can't throw it straight on this occasion. Option, please. It's difficult, isn't it? Rugby is such a team game, and but that's one of those individual things, isn't it? Throwing into the line out. Okay. Yes, it's one of those skills as well. A bit like, I suppose, kicking a goal or hitting a golf ball. The ball doesn't move. There's nothing instinctive about it, and uh, because you're on this occasion throwing it from stationary the mind plays a huge role and once you uh, have had a couple of crooked throws they have a nasty habit and if you're very strong of mind to uh, to multiply and that's been the problem tonight for Lana Skeldon not helped by a pretty healthy breeze out there Poppy Cleal there with a the pick up at number eight Waterman again well she's done it once and it worked that time. Well, the defender going rather lower than she did the first time. Here is Kill Dunn. What an offload out there to Pierce. And Pierce pirouettes and twists and turns and steps and scores. Another try for Charlotte Pierce. Very happy with that. She shouldn't have got it really. Should have been tackled, but it. She's pleased okay, with that. Yeah, they're driving through. Yeah, okay. Second try of this match, and it was Ellie Kildern as well, who was influential in that try. But the same move, exactly the same move from the scrum. Just bringing the extra player into that back line. Well picked up by Ellie Kildern, and look at that, pushing through the tackle, going beyond the tackle. Two players. Rolly involved there, kind of ran into each other and didn't quite manage to make the tackle and, uh, and Charlotte Pierce kept on her feet and over the try line again. Well, we don't want to shuffle off the likes of Emily Scarrett off to the uh, Women's Rugby International Retirement Home just yet. But certainly one thing in her absence that we've seen over the course of three rounds now so in this competition has been the emergence the of the likes of Charlotte Pierce, a third eight. cap tonight. Ellie Kildun, just 18, playing in white for just the sixth time. And they are players of huge talent. And here you can see them combining. Quite brilliant. Yeah, it's good, isn't it? And, you know, we chatted about it before, didn't we? Whether, whether the sevens, fifteens, sharing of players is right or wrong and the different focuses what it does mean is these players are coming through and um Eddie Kildun certainly one of those and has been likened to Emily Scarrett by Simon Middleton you can see that in the way that she runs look at that carry there from Amy Cocaine England now I think maybe just threatening to run riot Kildun looking for the ball so much space out wide for England if they could just get it out the Scotland defence were a little bit so narrow the players on this left hand side Daly McLean there sticking to the formula kicking within her own half there for territory but Scotland get a chance here perhaps to counter Liz Musgrove almost getting away was Emma Wassel. It's come half back on her feet. Out there from Nelson. Burn up there making the tackle. There's Conkle. Missed tackle that time by Tuima. Advantage knock on. England taking full advantage here. But no then we get a second knock on, but we'll come back to the first on. one which was by a Scotland player. You 
do just have a little bit of a sense, don't you, that this might be the moment that England start to ramp things up. So we see Amber Reeds coming on. She's been out injured. Kildan comes off. She's not had a bad night, has she? She can be really pleased with her performance again this evening. And Lauren Cattell coming off as well. So a significant landmark in the young career of Kelly Smith making her debut for England tonight. Player who actually came largely through the sevens program. That's where she's excelled before here. Now making her international debut at 15s. And look here, this is all one-way traffic for England. The penalty will come in a moment. Perhaps not, says Joy Neville. We need to drive through, okay? Drive through, okay? And it looks like England will just make a few positional changes as well. Waterman possibly slotting back into fullback now. Well, you can see one or two of the rejigs there in the England back line. Amber Reid there, earning her 47th cap tonight. Plays her rugby for Bristol. Her uncle, Andy Reid, if you remember the name, played a lot for Scotland, also played for the British and Irish Lions. Once again, that set piece only going in one direction. The ball being Six. controlled by Poppy Cleal. And there she goes, Cleal. There's the offload onto Pierce. They're inside the 22. That was out from Daly McLean. There's the step from Tuima. A touch for Kelly Smith. And what a start it would be for her if on debut she could get a try tonight. And eventually, Daniel Waterman, uh, tippy toes, touching the white line. I'm going to I need to see the ball again. Next one. Here you go. England using that same platform again. Poppy Cleal at eight, linking up with a blindside winger. Controlling that ball really well, going forward. And then Pierce pops up on her shoulder. Well, France, who are preparing for their match in Corsica, that comes up tomorrow. France 10 points out of a possible 10. England well on their way to 15 out of a possible 15. All roads in the next round will head in the direction of the Stade des Alpes in Grenoble. That could be the decider. Advantage. Almost certainly Marie. will be in fact. There's attacker. Thompson with a kick, and that wasn't out of the middle. Itaka, number eight. Number eight. White. Pretty good play from Hi. Scotland there, and no actually pain. knew they had the advantage there, but here they are with a penalty. Yeah, I know. I'm Get themselves out point. of this 22. See if they can put some of that attack again back on England. Scotland back row, they need to pick it up now. They played really well in that first half and they can be so influential. Particularly when they consider that they're playing into this wind as well. We saw that at times England struggle with that in the first 40. One went around. And when you're playing into this wind, it does mean that the line-out throw here of Lana Skeldon has to be right on the money. Possession is absolute for the Scots here. And it's not just the win, they're competing with the pressure from Tamara Taylor, Abby Scott as well. It doesn't make it easy for the Scotland lineup. Here's Tamara Taylor earning her 114th cap tonight. She's seen it all. Two World Cup finals, winning one of them in Paris in 2014. No, 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 no. But the Scots showing plenty of spirit here. Moving within six or seven metres of halfway, and they force the penalty. Come on. 
So I have number eight for a high and no number in her back, which is number six. I've spoken to her about penalties at the third penalty side entry. Six, please. Okay. Side entry, I spoke to you about penalties at your third. So, Ro right. Burnfield. Captain. The Richmond player please goes off for ten minutes. Or else there'll be further yellow cards. England's second yellow card of the night. Yeah, Burnfield was working really hard to defend that maul, that good maul from Scotland. Doing it illegally here, Joy Neville talk about creeping round the side of that maul, which you can't do. Okay, wife on the line. You can see she starts, starts in the middle of that maul, but then creeps, creeps round the side. You come through the middle, it's fine, but you can't creep round the side of that maul. She was swimming around the side, as they say, weren't she? So, can Skeldon make this count? She can. Oh. Textbook from the Scots. They have the one player advantage. They couldn't really make any use of it when Izzy Noel Smith was off the pitch towards the end of the first half for 10 minutes. Can they make it count this time now? Kennedy getting a little bit flustered. Yes, I think there was a rather frank exchange between one or two players there, and uh, we do have to bear in mind this is an international rugby match, and occasionally tensions run a little high. And from time to time. Some fairly colourful language does come out. If you heard any of that, then I apologise on the player's behalf. There's Megan Kennedy, just a third cap tonight. Certainly playing with plenty of confidence. Feels as if she belongs at this level. Made her Scotland debut in Colwyn Bay against Wales when Scotland was so strong in the second half. And they're looking for that sort of action here tonight. You need to listen as well. It's the first time I'm speaking to you. I'm going to give you the mark. I need you to make sure you stay. Motion's running a little high out there, aren't they? Well, that was wonderfully farmed back by Abby Scott, and straight through goes Daly McLean. What an important tackle that was. The tackle coming from Liz Musgrove, running across field there is Tuima. Here's Riley. There's Tamara Taylor. No hands! Blue away. Once again, England, Seven. a player down. They scored a try with a player down in the first half, looking to do the same here. And they've got a player outside. Well, I do wonder, should Kelly Smith have given that to Poppy Cleal? There is another chance, though. Well, that was a big hit, which has come at some cost. And Joy Neville has spotted the concern. Thank you. This looks rather uncomfortable. Yeah, Megan Kennedy very quick, wasn't she, to, to support her teammate there. Well, England just preparing take advantage of the stoppage they'll be making an alteration on the tight head side of the front row Justine Lucas waiting to come on it's uh, it's Lana Skeldon who is responsible for that uh, stunning tackle which came at some cost to herself let's hope she's okay good crowd tonight I did say in the introduction that we were hoping to break 
a record of uh, at least one kind. It is the biggest crowd we've ever seen at a home game in Scotland in the Women's Six Nations. 3,278. So they've gone through the 3,000 ceiling. It's brilliant, Martin. You know, looking back quite a long way, many years since when I played, and crowds were not like this at all. And they've been working really, really hard to build their support, build their crowd. And Lauren Harris is also on number 20. Yes, the Scots have made another change. Louise, Louise McMillan looks to me as if she's come on, and it uh, appears as if Sarah Bonner has gone off. Scotland also waiting to make that change at hooker with uh, Jodie Retty. Waiting to come on there is confirmation of that change in the back row with Louise McMillan coming on, so uh, we have both the McMillan sisters out there now, and it's good to see Lana Skeldon in one piece. She took a mighty bang on the head. If it is of uh, any consolation, it was one of the best tackles of the night. For Scotland, there's number two, Lana Skeldon, replaced by number 16. So Jody the clock Gretchen. is back on there. Uh, one or two of the changes that have been made. Lauren Harris is on. And her Please 20th cap. She's moved on to the wing. Having uh, replaced Rona Lloyd. So despite being a woman down. It's a good Five. attacking position here for England. They've Set. got a big uh, blind side perhaps to exploit. <laughs> Kelly Smith is going to come in on the shoulder there of Poppy Cleal, but the pass wasn't sufficiently precise. It's gone forward. Yeah, they're using it a lot, aren't they? That that pick or pass direct from Poppy Cleal at the base, and it's worked, hasn't it? A couple of times previously with Danielle Waterman coming in, just didn't quite get the the timing. I think the pass, the pop up, just a not as sympathetic as it perhaps needed to be. Yes, a player of Kelly Smith's quality, though I must say, you'd expect her to grab that. It wasn't the best pass. I, I completely agree, yeah. First cut nerves, maybe. 50% yes, culpability, I think, on both players' parts. And look here. Well, somehow, Scotland have come away with that. They did wonderfully well in the back row. Now, let's see if they can get the exit right. The kick ahead from the scrum half law. Waterman at speed. First up tackle made by Hannah Smith. Good hands that time on from Abby Scott to Poppy Cleal. There's Leanne Riley. That is the replacement, Amber Reed. Four state, good. The offload did find the teammate. No, Rock, 23. Inside the last five minutes of the Simbin period, and England looking very Half controlled. Push. Little stab ahead there from Daly McLean. Tack and release, Covering uh, across behind the defence there was Sarah Law. Backwards. Stay. That's Jake Conkle taking place just outside her 22. Boys. That was Louise McMillan. Got a chance here to counter for England. Waterman had to wait for it. Goes herself. Releasing there to Ema. No, 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 stay. Kelly Smith. Showing plenty of poise there. Forward goes Abby Scott. Here's Riley. On to Daly McLean. 
Well, that happened quite a bit two weeks ago against Wales. Sterling McLean getting charged down. But there might be one or two problems here. One, please. One, please. There's a tackle in the air. McMillan getting called forward. The tackle in the air. A yellow card. Yeah. Well, when you consider it's 14 against 14, but only for the next three minutes, this could be a period of woe for Scotland. And that is just ill discipline, isn't it? It is. And McMillan there, I think in her head, she thinks that Lucas is going to be on the ground and she goes into tackle, but she's not looking at all. And that is careless play, isn't it? In these areas, especially now, you know, need to be really focused seeing where that ball is, nine, seeing where our opposition play is, and, and she's been there just because it was it's careless play and potentially dangerous play. Yes, you've just got to keep the eyes up, haven't you? So a change at scrum half here. The Scotland, Mary Grieve is on. There are a couple of full-time vets actually on the uh, Scotland bench tonight. One of them is Mary Grieve. Find. Set. So they put in there from Leanne Riley. Oh, what a hard running line there from Tuima. And the dummy, and the step, and the celebration. And after all of that, well, she had to score the try, didn't she? <laughs> and thankfully she did. Maybe we'll talk later about early celebrations. Um, but yeah, I mean, England put all their backs over. Pierce moved over, so they had all their backs over on that side, so they had the numbers. And that's just a lovely line and uh, a dummy and pass. And slightly early celebration, I think. <laughs> Two minutes in the yellow. Slightly early. <laughs> Very early. Well, I suspect Simon Middleton might have a word. You're only 19. It's only your fourth cap. <laughs> Apart from the early celebration, good try though, wasn't it? Really great pace from Tui Ma. It was that running line that created it, wasn't it? <laughs> Tremendous stuff. I'm, I'm sure some of the senior players might have a word with her about early celebrations. <laughs> that rather makes Chris Ashton look understated. Thirty-eight points to eight. Fourteen against fourteen for the next minute, and then England will have a one-player advantage for roughly six minutes. The clearing kick there from Daly McLean. The kick ahead from Chloe Rolly, but it just hands the ball back to England. Daly McLean knows that the fullback is committed. Now it's a foot race. Chasing after it is Kelly Smith. But in the end, that was well gathered. Really good chase, wasn't it, by Kelly Smith there. You could see her tearing up the pitch. Substitutions, bring them on, please. So England really are emptying the bench now, aren't they? And here she comes, Rochelle Rocky Clark. Earning her 135th cap tonight, taking her ahead of Gethin Jenkins. And Rocky Clark becomes the most cap prop in the history of Test rugby. A real landmark. And she's replaced by number 16, Rock Davis. Carry there from okay, Amber Reid. There's Mattinson. Number 17, Rochelle Clark. Penalty only. And Rochelle Rocky Clark. She deserves all the plaudits she gets, really. And um, 
played alongside her throughout my playing career and she's still out there now and it's it's not just for her play the way she plays the way she lifts up players around her she's just a fantastic team person to have around and um, long may she continue <laughs> Rocky Clark made a test debut for England back in 2003. So you see the confirmation of the changes that have been made. Marley Packer is on. She, one of the uh, World Cup winners. In action tonight, Amy Cocaine has gone off. She's been replaced by Lark Davis. Set. So there's Katie Mattinson. The pick up there at the base by Noel Smith, and here goes Waterman drifting inside, bumping the knees. And it's another score for England, and there was barely a Scottish hand laid on her white jersey. She looked really happy with that, doesn't she? Danielle Waterman and the vastly Scottish crowd. Not so happy, and England get their seventh try in this game. Solid scrum for England. Katie Matteson running wide. And Nolly Waterman just glides through, doesn't she? She enjoyed that one. Yeah, she's part of that class of 2014 is uh, Danielle Waterman, Nolly Waterman. A try scorer in the final against Canada in Paris. Emily Scarrett was the other. Danielle Waterman, someone who spent a lot of time obviously with sevens as well. And it's just so lovely to see her out on the 15 aside pitch this season there she is rugby's in the blood with daniel waterman the father jim played more than 400 times for bar daniel waterman tonight earning her 80th cap for a country Absolutely crucial for the Scots here to dig in over the course of the last 11 minutes or so of the match. They're a player down for the next three. That tackle a little bit high from Jade Conkle. Bailey McLean kicks deep, but it was well gathered by Rolly. Look out for Rolly on the counter. Oh, Haven't seen too much from her tonight. Good break there coming from Lauren Harris. Take a step. Crucial here for the Scots, they retain possession. Tuck and release! That was McMillan, or should I say Grieve? No, no, why? 12 metres or so inside the England half. That was Smith ball out here to Rolly but the pass was just a shade forward yeah and we just have a look yeah it was definitely forward pass wasn't it unfortunate as Rolly finding a little bit of space on the end of that Lisa Thompson there, responsible for the forward pass, one of the triumvirate of Scots playing their rugby for Lille Metropole in France. Coach. Find. Well, it's going to be the biggest defeat of the Six Nations so far for Scotland. They lost the opening match by just a single point, 18-17 to Wales at Colwyn Bay. And then a fortnight ago here, they did well to beg, peg back France. Yeah, yeah, 26, or should I say 20, yes, 26 points to three it was 
on this ground two weeks ago against the French. Fines. Set. So the foot in there from Mattinson. Here goes Smith. The offload inside. That was on to Packer, and then. Well, the ball goes to ground. And Scotland get a chance here to clear their lines. Back push, take a step. Still advantage. Three there just checking on the offside line, carried forward by Louise McMillan. Advantage is over. Capri says the advantage is over. Here's Kelly Smith. Brings it out wide to Daly McLean, but there's no support on her outside. There is now. That was well grabbed by Smith. She's pretty much on her own. Good tackle okay. covering across from Hannah Smith. And Scotland get the penalty. Isolated. England, just Justine Lucas yeah. getting a bit isolated there and forced to hold on to the ball. Scott, Scotland, top Scotland, stealing that ball, but to give a penalty away in the process. Is England have got plenty of depth in that front row. There you can see Simon Middleton. On the left, the head coach. There's his opposite number. Shay Munro. He's talking about the tight head side of the front row. Justine Lucas there. Played in every match at last year's World Cup. I'm off now very much the number two boy. though to Sarah Byrne. Scotland just making a change. Perfect. On comes I'm Siobhan off. Cattigan. Take another step for me, if you don't mind, please. Yellow card is over, and it's one Siobhan replacing another. Catigan coming on for McMillan. So, Scotland are now back to full 15. That's what that switching personnel was about. Out there from Smith. There's Thompson, but a challenge there from Tuima. Being mopped up there by Lauren Harris. Relief, White! Last seven minutes of the match. Well, that was well plucked out of the air by Helen Nelson. A reminder that Helen Nelson only learned she was playing at fly half an hour or so before kickoff, but Scotland are penalised. There is Helen Nelson. Plays a rugby for the Murrayfield Wanderers. Good pressure again from the England forwards at the breakdown, forcing that penalty. Feel like the replacements or the impact players, the finishers for England, just about brought a little bit of buzz again to this game. Sort of started to go a bit flat. I feel there's a bit more of a buzz again. Blue. This last seven minutes or so, England will want to get across that try line again, won't they? And they well have 50 in their sights. Converted try will do that. Here's Lark Davis. Goes to the front of the line and it's so well worked. And here's Davis again. But rather too easily in the end, dragged into touch by Louise McMillan. It's a shame, wasn't it? It started quite well. It's quite a nice little nifty little move from the line out there that they've been strayed off the, off the training pitch. Take it, White, take a step forward. So it's the captain throwing in, Rachel Malcolm, one of those players who plays her club rugby down in England for Loughborough Lightning. Interesting line, actually. You can see she's throwing in. Well, her brother, James, he's a hooker for Glasgow, and he's actually playing tonight over in Cork against Munster. Good for it. Yeah, she's captain at Loughborough, one of nine players who play their rugby outside of Scotland. Thompson there with the kick across field. A little bit of nudge in the back, perhaps. Chloe Rolly it is. In the end, he picks the ball up. And in the end, England dragging her into touch.
So Scotland making two more alterations. Coming on is uh, Lindsay Smith. There is Lindsay Smith from the Jordan Hill Club. Jordan Hill has produced one or two decent uh, props in the past. Thinking particularly of Mighty Mouse Ian McLaughlin, who uh, learnt his rugby at Jordan Hill, the former Scotland captain. Thank you. Thank you. Here we go. Here's your mark. Stay there, please. Four, take a step, please. Take a step. Tweema, the inside ball. Take a step, take a step. There's Mattinson, change of direction on to uh, Daly McLean. Another carry forward, that time from Lark Davis. And three and a half minutes to go here. Driven on that time by Izzy Noel Smith. Daly McLean with the offload there. Oh, and the ball just spilling forward out of the hands of Roe Burnfield. Four. No advantage, knock on from White. Oh, the knock on from England, and it will be a Scotland put in. So, three minutes remaining, England well on their way to victory. Catherine, your player of the match. Yeah, a couple of contenders, couldn't they? Kildun played really well to start with. Sarah Burns had another strong yeah. game. Front five, Jen would be good. Tamara Taylor and Abby Scott have been strong, but today's player of the match is that experienced player there, Danielle Waterman. Every time she's had the ball, she's brought something to the game. She's made ground. She scored that try really early on in the game, doesn't she? With her lovely footwork of hers. Please. Making Thanks. ground all the time, asking questions of the opposition. Keep that shoulder it. Really influential and scoring that lovely try again that she was so pleased with in the second half. We expect her to play well, don't we? We expect her one of those players, but she's had a really, really good performance this evening, I think. That's one of the England players missing this evening, Abby Dow. Relatively early in her career, wore the white shirt against, England, against Wales a couple of weeks ago. Autumn and part of a back three rejig. It's good to Leave see that Simon Middleton has so many options these days. That's Helen Nelson. Final two minutes. Oh dear. Scotland making rather a hash of that. So there will be a final chance here for England. A bit scrappy now, isn't it? This ball's not quite sticking to hand. It's Cath O'Donnell there, just on for a third cap. I saw Cath O'Donnell four years ago in Bristol at a camp we were running with Bristol ladies. She'd come all the way from Keswick to come to that camp. So any aspiring young international rugby players out there who want to be international players, you've got to put the hard work in, make the hard yards, commit to the game, and the rewards will come for all that hard work. Well, it's certainly an improvement on 12 months ago for the Scots. They didn't record a point for a start last year, and they conceded 64. They'll be desperate to hold England here to less than 50. The little grubber through, and that was well dealt with by Bailey Sinclair. Sinclair, the 24th player coming into tonight. Joined the 23 after Lisa Martin was forced to pull out. Carry there from uh, Jade Conkle, the try scorer for Scotland in the first half. There is Jade Conkle. She's had another strong game, hasn't she, Scotland? And yeah, you have to say an improvement on last year. And there's glimpses there, aren't? Isn't there something special for this Scotland team? 
but there's uh, you know there's a long way to go still yes in terms of the evolution of the women's game in Scotland I think it's probably fair to say they're almost a decade behind England and that's no fault of their own it's the focus from the rugby football union on the women's game does rather predate the Scots but Scotland clearly making progress they have done this season they have been outplayed tonight but they ran Wales very close on the opening Thank night kept France in check for much of the 80 minutes here two weeks ago they have been outclassed here they have but England's performance has not been polished by any means they have scored some great tries but there'll be things that they want to address especially before the big game in France yes the Stade des Alpes in a fortnight's time almost certainly going to be the decider these pass thrown back goes Helen Nelson and England it have it and they have been presented with a final opportunity Daly McLean feeds it out wide that Waterman's looking for another and she's got it well I'm sure they will keep a close eye on the touchline I'd love Waterman to get a hand I have a feeling her foot went into touch it looks like Joy Neville is going to go to the TMO Thank you. So the instruction there from okay, the assistant is check. It's Brian That's McNeese, uh, fellow Irishman. Can we check touch? Any reason why we cannot award the try, please? Okay. Any reason so we can't award the try? In is it a hat trick? Check, checking for touch, or is Just it a foot touch. in Thank touch? You. Yeah, the foot's in touch, isn't it? Joy, can you see that angle? Like yeah, the the white foot is in touch before the ball has been Great grabbed. tackle, wasn't it? Okay. By so it's Sinclair in touch, coming no across try. there. In touch, no try. Correct. Okay, thank you. No try. Yeah, no in try. Touch. Foot in touch. No try awarded. So the final score is well, a slightly scoring. downbeat end to what's scoring. been a marvellous 80 minutes for English women's rugby. Let's hear it for you. Catherine, we have seen over the course of the last three or four weeks some new stars appear, the likes of Ellie Kildan and uh, Lagi Tuima tonight. But I guess we turn back to uh, some of the old heroines, Danielle Waterman, who was quite tremendous this evening. Yeah, she's been she's been brilliant tonight, Danielle Waterman, and, and I think. Simon Middleton will be hoping that Rachel Burford and Sarah Hunter are, are back fit uh, for the France game, which is the big, the big clash in this Six Nations. So some pleasing performances tonight, some great individual tries, team tries, some positives, but lots of work on as well for England. So there it is, 15 points out of a possible 15 for England. They've beaten Scotland by 43 points to eight. <laughs>